I wanted to ask you, because you mentioned Europe freezing to death. Today it was announced that the EU has uh, uh, signed on to a formal price cap of Russian energy. And this comes after the disastrous, which I've heard you speak about as well, the disastrous sabotage of the Nord Stream pipelines. And of course, right, Russia is being blamed for this. And uh, a lot of the world believes that the United States, NATO, had something to do with it. Could you go over the problem here? Like what, one, what is the significance of this uh, pipeline, these pipelines being basically taken out? Uh, what are your thoughts about that situation? And then the consequences ongoing, because this is a development that's been happening for several months now during this special military operation. The EU has been kind of the U.S.'s poodle, uh, the U.S.'s servant in, in a lot of ways. And uh, the, the situation is very grim. So could you talk about uh, that? Uh, maybe uh, I would love to get your thoughts about it. Well, let's just start off with, again, you know, first principles here. Um, the EU, the United States, NATO, the G7, they're all the same thing. They're, they're all wrapped in the same cloak of um, basically working solely for the benefit of the singular American uh, hegemony. Um, so America is dictating policies and, and, and such. They have collectively denigrated Russia as being little more than a gas station disguised as a country. Okay, I mean, if, first of all, it's wrong, but let's just play the cute little game. If you're gonna call Russia a gas station, then you should at least respect them as a gas station, especially when you're an automobile and that's the only gas station around. Um, and if you want to start cutting yourself off, sanctioning the gas station, you're going to find yourself in the middle of nowhere on a four-lane highway uh, with an empty tank and nowhere to go. And that's where Europe is right now. Um, the, the, the hubris of Europe to think that they could put a price cap on, on Russian energy, it's just ridiculous. It's going to backfire. Um, the, you know, these are people who have already dug the deepest hole possible, and they're just continuing to dig the hole deeper. The, uh, the only solution for Europe was to go back to Russian energy. That was the only solution. There's no other option out there. There's nothing viable uh, that's going to save them from this. Um, and that's you know what happened with you know why the United States struck Nord Stream. And I'll tell you why I believe it. Um, well, first of all, let's just talk about that for a second. There are people sitting in jails around the world who have been convicted on circumstantial evidence that is weaker than the circumstantial evidence that we have regarding America's role in striking the Nord Stream pipelines. First of all, we have a clear statement of intent from the President of the United States himself, who said that if Russian tanks cross into Ukraine, he will shut down Nord Stream 2. It will stop functioning. Um, that's the intent. Then we have a clear statement of motive from um, uh, Secretary of State uh, Blinken, who said, oh, well, you know, it's too bad he got shut down, but this is a great opportunity. We should view this as a wonderful opportunity, a chance to do things that we always said we wanted to do. And he's supported by statements made by Victoria Nuland, by Condoleezza Rice. So we know that there's been motive. It's not just a crime of passion. This is a crime that's been considered for some time. It's premeditated murder. Uh, is what it is. So there's motive for premeditation. Um, and then we have the means. You know, the U.S. Navy holding exercises right over the spot where the, uh, uh, the, the attacks occurred, underwater exercises using the very technology that would be needed to do this. So I could indict the United States and I could win at trial because there's not a jury out there that would say, nah, nah, nah. I think really the nation that built the pipeline, um, did it. The nation that benefits from the pipeline's existence did it. And remember, how does it benefit from the existence? You say, well, it didn't pump. It's not pumping gas. I mean, the Russians, you know, maybe they wanted to, you know, 
stop the, well, they already did. It's called an on-off switch. If Russia doesn't want to have gas flowing to Europe, they hit the off switch. Um, but Russia wants gas flowing. How do we know? The Russians said, we want to sell you gas. We want to have Nord Stream 2 up and running. And what was happening? The German people, angered by the policies of their government, were going to the streets. And they were starting to demand that their governments turn on Nord Stream 2. And any democracy where you have the people demanding something, a politician that fails to you know, comply with the demands tends to get voted out of office, removed from office. And German politicians were starting to make noises as maybe we need to do something here. Um, so what did the United States do? Took the decision out of their hands. Pop, 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 pop. No more Nord Stream 2, no, nor, 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 no more Nord Stream 1. So even if the German government wanted to turn on the pipeline, they can't. Um, and that's what the United States did here. They, they, they did it. Now, I think this was, this is just going to make matters worse for Germany right now because there's, Germany literally has no options, no options now. There's nothing they can do. Um, the United States can't provide enough uh, liquid natural gas to compensate. Uh, the, Germany can't afford the prices that will be uh, charged for this. Um, so Germany's doomed, literally doomed. Their economy is going to shut down. Um, hundreds, if not thousands of people are going to die this winter, die from exposure. And who's to blame? The United States, 110%. <laughs> it's the Americans' fault. Um, and, the, and the sad thing is, all of Europe knows it. This isn't a secret. All of your, even in the United States, where we pretend, ah, oh, the Russians did, the Russians did. Well, Michael Rubin just wrote an article in the in the National Interest where he said, hey, maybe Biden should do to Turk Stream, you know, the, the the Turkish pipeline that feeds gas into Southern Europe, what he did to Nord Stream Two. He doesn't say what he did, but we know what he means. Blow it up. Uh, he said Biden. He so he clearly said Biden shut down Nord Stream Two. Biden did it. Well, how, why? Because Biden said he was going to do it. Um, but now we're talking about hacking the Turks. We declared war on Europe. That's just a statement of fact. We declared war on Europe. We uh, destroyed a $12 billion piece of Europe in, European energy infrastructure. Um, we have condemned the German economy to collapse, a, a collapse that hasn't been seen since the end of the Second World War. We're responsible. Right now, the German political and economic elites aren't willing to divorce America. They can't. They're like an abused spouse. They just keep coming back for more. But over the course of this winter, I think you're going to see these political elites removed from office. I think you're going to see these economic elites becoming um, irrelevant because you're not too elite of an economist when your economy is collapsing. And they're going to be replaced by uh, new power structures that will be more inclined to view the United States as the problem and Russia as the solution. So this back, I believe in the long term, this will backfire dramatically for the United States, that um, there's no way the United States walks away from this unscathed because right now the, the damage to Germany is still theoretical. Um, at some point in time, it becomes reality. And that reality brings with it a political consequence.